to the service we also have other amazing videos and interesting salmons on our youtube channel movuno young and fearless so after this service check them out we'd love to see you there enjoy the service <music> Hi, welcome to the third installment of winning. Listen to that word, winning. <laughs> yes, but I want to start off with a question. What would you say to a friend who calls you maybe late in the night or early in the morning and asks you, are you still sleeping? <laughs> like, I thought about that and I was just like, okay, what would I say to this person? How do you call me late in the night and ask me, or uh, very early, like someone calls you maybe let's say at midnight, unless those people who are nocturnal, who sleep late, who don't have sleep. But you know, if you probably go to bed by 9, 10, 11 more latest, then someone calls you at 2, or someone calls you at 4 a.m. and tells you, are you still sleeping? What would you answer them? Like, I want you to be honest with your, with your answers. Just put them in the comment section and tell us what would be that answer that you would actually give them. Imagine that, right? So yeah, because my answer, to be honest, sometimes before, uh, I don't know what I would say to you. Probably I'd tell you um, I'm busy counting the stars and, you know, just naming them one by one, you know, so that I can give you an answer, not to be rude or anything like that. But this week, I want us to look into a story, um, a story of someone very interesting, someone who was right by the lake or the waters where he could actually get healing. And then he's asked a question and he has a phenomenal answer that is very interesting. And funny enough, this is exactly how we tend to answer to the world or to the problems that we have when someone wants to give us a solution. So I want us to look at this. I want us to read a story from John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 6, which says, now there, is, um, now there in Jerusalem, near the ship gate pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades, here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who, had, one who was there had been an invalid 38 years Imagine being there for 38 years, a man being there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get healed? What would be your answer? Maybe if you're sitting next to your brother or sister or even just a friend or even your parent, ask them, what would be your answer? Imagine that. You know, how many of you agree with me that this question actually exposes your character? It actually reveals <laughs> who you become. Like that question of, are you still asleep? Imagine, what does it bring out of you? Like when someone asks you such a question. Imagine that, right? So, you know, today Jesus is asking you, do you want to get well? Do you want to come out of your addiction? <laughs> do you want to leave that toxic relationship? You know, when I, when I talk about this, it's, I'm reminded of so many things that I've gone through. The addictions, the relationships, all the problems I've had. But I, I'll share one. So, I'm a person who, yes, right now I'm not ashamed to talk about it, but I'm a person who I remember I was addicted to porn. And that thing, you know, the thing is the first time you do it, you feel like, yeah, everything is okay. And you're good, right? Feels like a quickie. But eventually, that's actually not the right thing. But you see, what happens is that you get addicted and you get so hooked to it that now it even destroys you on the inside. 
Some of us, we feel like, no, no one is ever going to know. But imagine Christ knows. And you see, what happens is, it even destroys the relationship that you get to have with other people. And most of all, it destroys your relationship. If you ever decide to get married, it will actually destroy your relationship. Even right now, if you're dating, it can actually destroy your relationship. But imagine this. Someone who actually, I got to confide in and I told them, yes, this was happening. And then they asked me, do you want to actually stop it? And I was like, yeah, I would. But it's, it's not like as if it's harming anyone. It's just me. Right? Um, I'm not destroying anyone. I'm not actually hurting anyone or impurifying anyone else. But actually, it was me. I was impurifying myself. I was not whole. I was trying to satisfy myself with a worldly pleasure. And you see, that's the thing. Sometimes we want to remain in that state because your body says, we need you. But your spirit is telling you no. By things we're torn between listening to our spirit and our body. And so we stuck, get stuck listening to the flesh and because it wants to ravid us with that desire to just have that short pleasure for just that minute. And yet, we're getting harmed for the rest of our lives. So imagine that. Imagine Christ asking you, do you want to get healed? That relationship, do you want to recover from it? Some of you maybe have been in positions whereby you've been in toxic relationships where you don't even know what's happening. You're being abused or you're being beaten or you're being used. But you feel like, eh, he's the person I was with the first so I can't let go really or maybe you start giving the excuses of yeah he's always around he's caring but that but is already a red flag for you now imagine that you know the answer we give determines what happens next I know we all know that God is knowing and he knows everything that's happening and you wonder why is he asking but you see he's asking because he's given you that freedom to say yes or no. But you see, the thing is, he's given you that freedom to choose right and wrong. And for him asking you, he's only just saying, son, daughter, do you want to get well? He's asking you to take that chance and allow him to make you well. But you see what happens is most of us, we all always stay in a bubble or decide to remain enclosed in this space where we feel we're comfortable, where we feel we need to be and you don't want to step out or, you know, you want to stay in your comfortable zone. Let me put it that way. But if imagine this is what exactly the, the, the invalid answer that we choose to have. When he was asked, you know, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred while I'm trying to get in someone else goes ahead of me. Now, how invalid is that answer? Christ is asking you, do you want to get healed? And you're looking at the problems of you getting into a pool. Imagine that's the same thing that we say. We look at the comfortability. We look at staying in a comfort zone instead of actually looking for freedom we're looking at staying in bondage instead of being set free we have dreams of soaring so high like birds but yet we're locked up in cages because that is where we think is our happiness we're limited to only the pleasures of this world of only what the eyes can actually make us see and we think that's what's best but christ is asking do you want better now imagine that Jesus asked this man if he wanted to get well. But instead of saying yes, the man responded by telling him all the reasons why he couldn't. He answered the question according to the current circumstance, according to the current situation that he's in. Do you answer the questions that when someone asks you according to your current situation? I want you to, I want you to take a moment and ponder upon it. Look at yourself. Are you in a space of bondage? Are you in a place that's making you trapped? 
Or are you in a relationship <laughs> that you feel is okay and yet you know it's toxic? Are you stuck in a situation that you know you could actually be in a better one but you're like, this is, this is probably my it today? I want you to take a moment and ask yourself this question. Do you want to get well? That's what Christ is asking you. Are you ready to move beyond your circumstance? Are you ready to let go of that trouble and move into a space where you're free? Some of us might feel like it's going to be hard. And yes, it is hard. <laughs> it's, I'm not guaranteeing you that it's going to be an, uh, an easy path to walk. It's going to be a rough journey. But imagine that's what builds you up. That's what molds you up to be stronger. That's what refines you to be in a better place. Now that question is, do you want to get healed? As we ponder on that question, I want us to get into a, boy, a time of reflection whereby you start actually asking yourself to look within your life, to wonder, am I in a relationship that I need to let go? Am I stuck to something that I need to actually let go of? Am I stuck in a situation that I need to move away from? Am I stuck in sin that I need to let go of? Because we were not destined for bondage, but set, we were was set for freedom to be able to fly to so high like the bird and be able to spread our wings and know that we are free this is my desire to honor you Lord with all my heart I worship And all that is within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Yeah, Lord, I give you. This is my desire to honor you and all with all my heart I worship you oh, oh, oh. and all that is within me I give you praise all that I adore is in you yeah Lord I give you So I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away.
give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, Lord I give you my heart. I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm away I live for you alone Lord, I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm awake But have your way in me I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me, I give myself away, yeah. uh -huh. I give myself away, so you can lose me, I give myself away, I give myself away, so you can use me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, God have you. Are you ready to get healed? Are you ready to live the dysfunctional life that you've been living? I knew that I had to live the dysfunctional life that I was living by one, letting go of the people that made me feel like that is okay. That's one. But also I had to be able to let go of the thoughts that I had by filling my mind with something else. So I had to be able to go into sports. That was one. Then I had at least friends that were accountable for me. Reading the Bible was the next. All these filled my mind with thoughts that were different, that were cleaner, that were better. It's not like as if I'm saying I'm perfect. <laughs> no. But they changed my situation. Because I said, yes, I want to be able to get healed. Now that same question is to you. Ask yourself, am I ready to get healed? Let's stop the invalid answers. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you for who you are. For your name is mighty and grateful, Lord God. Father. We thank you that you take the time to even know us one by one. And because you know us one by one, you're able to ask us and know that we're stuck in situations and you're able to ask us, do we want to get healed, Father? So Heavenly Father, at this point in time, I call upon you to come and dwell in us. To come and be the one to heal us. To come and be the one to restore us. Father, I ask that we may say yes to your question so that we could actually live a life of greatness. So that we could be set free. We could be released. We could have no more shackles. We could be set on a higher ground because we know that you have been able to heal us. 
Father, we know that the journey will not be a straight path. But you will give us the grace. You will give us the strength to endure, to persevere, and to know that we, we will be victors. We are already victors in your name. And we know that this path that we walk in your name is of victory. So we thank you, Father, for this question that you get to give us, to be able to say yes, to be able to allow us, to be able to come and dwell within our hearts, Heavenly Father. So I ask that you may come and dwell in our hearts, that we may see you more and not the problems that we have, that we may see the clarity and not the blockages in our lives, that we may seek for you and not be blocked by these situations that are happening now. But to know that with you, we are free. With you, we can do all things. With you, we can bear great fruit. So I thank you. I thank you for your son that you gave to die on the cross for us. That he set us free. And today, I know we have been able to, we have fallen short, but today we dedicate ourselves and say, and we dedicate our lives and say, Father, heal us. Father, make us well. For it is you that we want to follow. So I thank you and I honor you. And we pray all this, trusting and believing in your mighty name. Amen. Get healed. Don't give an invalid answer. Prepare to get healed. Thank you. Have a lovely week. I give my soul. I live for you alone. Give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live. I live for you alone, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Thank you very much for watching this amazing service. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you check out our YouTube channel at Mavuno Young and Fearless. And don't forget to subscribe while at it. Peace.